Welcome to the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today we have a great watch list. Please subscribe to our link here on YouTube and ring that bell for future updates. And here, Miss Vegas, oh yeah, today's date is August the 4th, 2019. All right, well, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending when you listen to the video. So today we're going to talk about pins. We're going to talk about APHA, JCS, REFR, ANCN, McDonald's, and Tesla. So let's get started. So definitely we talked about Pinterest on uh, Thursday's video. For those of you that listened, uh, we actually did say, you know, when Jim went through the charts, you know, I did talk about how the earnings uh, did very well. Guidance was raised. And a little bit disappointed on how far it ran. But let me tell you something. Jim did give the resistance at 3521. And my goodness, uh, for those of you that do follow on social media, you would have seen that I did post the exact posting on Pinterest uh, of Jim's alert of 3521 to the penny. Like, who does that? Only Jim. So um, congratulations to the Pinterest traders. First of all, those of you that were long. But also, you know, sometimes people don't like to swing trade. Uh, I did call the option idea on Friday morning, right at the open. I said, this is going to be my focus today. And we did call the Pinterest $34 call. Believe it or not, they were going for $0.35, cents, which is $35 a contract. And believe it, it went to over a dollar. It went as high as $1.30 per contract. So imagine putting in 35 bucks, turning it into a hundred, at least even a hundred dollars or doubling your money. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking a hundred percent gains. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, even if you take your hundred percent and it goes higher, who cares? Um, you could either sell it all, sell half, scale out. The point is you got to take profits because these option calls were expiring the same day. Um, so going to Pinterest in general, my thoughts on it here. You know, I thought it was going to actually go over the 3521 and maybe have some sort of continuation, but it actually did pull back. But I still believe the chart is super strong. Uh, I still, there's a pocket pivot. There was a volume surge. You have to remember this is an earnings winner, earnings mover. And I do anticipate a continuation this week on Pinterest. I'm actually liking it also, like I said, I kind of like it for a longer term hold. Uh, Pinterest to me is going to be one of those companies that's going to have um, probably stronger valuation because of the fact that you can click on a picture and, and buy what you see. Um, so I still think that uh, Pinterest has some good momentum and uh, we should see some action. Now, for those of you on the options side, uh, there is some good interest on the August 16, $34 calls going for about $1.32, and then we have some good interest on the 35s and 36 uh, going into August 16, which is not this week, but the week after. So keep your watch on Pinterest, and Jim, let's hear from you your thoughts on that chart. Well, we did hit uh, a double top there, that's for sure. And the double top high for the year, or for the as long as the IPO's been out, was 35.29, and it did have a great run from that opening of that IPO. We had what was here looks like eight great days of a run and then she went ahead and pulled back to support bounced up to a pivot point area right around the 2944 area pulled back to the 200 ema once it bounced off that ema it went ahead and tried to retrace that pivot point area of 2944 and then when we called it out i think it was thursday it did run up and create a big gap up high to the high of 3521 I called that 3521 off the base of that previous breakout that we had back at the beginning of the IPO. It did have a high of 3529. So I think support level is going to be probably the base of this here candle right here that happened right here at 3287. I think that's going to be your first support area. Also, the chart I'm using right now is called a TTM trend squeeze chart. It tells you when a stock's in the red or when it starts to have a momentum burst, and that's in the green. And also, I'm using the moving averages of the, the 9, the 34, and the 200 EMA. So I'm going to pull this up to the 20-day right now. And I do fluctuate around with my charts because I don't like to keep... I just have a variety of arsenals that I can use. So 
the first support's going to be right down here at the 20 3287 with this huge gap up that we did have after hours I do believe that this stock can probably pull back a little bit but if it follows this trend line up here we're right at support here at 3355 so I'm gonna call these next three resistances out and it's still a pretty good little gap it's a two dollar gap from 3372 all the way up to 3521 and we're gonna see if we can break that 3521 come into next week but I think we'll have a little pullback I think the support level on the pullback at low support is going to be right around 3158 and I'm going to turn this into a red line and call it my low support at 3158 with your second support right down here right around the 3287 with a breakout resistance and we did kind of set up in an ascending triangle breakout maybe at the end of the day at 32.72 so let's see if we can get this to break the yearly high of 35.21 have a triple top breakout if not it will pull back and it could pull back first thing in the morning people might want to be taking profit or their options I don't know 31.58 is going to be that low support anything below that is going to be a strong buy and I will repeat strong buy below 31.58 the first support 32.86 the resistance to break 33.72 long 35.21 with a triple top breakout the next one we're going to talk about is going to be a pot stock that that I'm kind of watched Friday with a little bit of help from one of our pot traders in the room Clay he's a uh, he's a great addition to our room and we're going to talk about that one next Miss Vegas yeah, so you know what, um, this company, Afrira Inc., I mean, obviously, just so you know, it's a Canadian company. Um, they got over 1.1 million square feet of Canadian cultivation, and they got over 1,000 employees worldwide, and they're in 10 different countries. Um, last news I saw, Jim, yes, uh, was back from the month of May, where they got their cultivation license for Germany. Um, but you know, looking at this chart, I mean, there is some definitely some serious momentum here. This crossed above the 50 day. It's, it's got a new uptrend. It has a pocket pivot. It crossed the 20 day moving average, the 50 day volume surged on Friday. So definitely thanks to Clay watching this because Clay is, um, also a marijuana consultant. So he's out and he lives out in Florida. And he's got a marijuana business and he's a marijuana consultant and he's really liking this one. And you know what? It looks pretty good here on this weekly. So um, let's hear about that because this Canadian company looks like it wants to have some action here this week. Yeah, the reason that it skyrocketed the other day, Friday, is that it had a 38% after surprise in profits. In that and I do want to mention too also about, oh, did they have the earnings, Jim? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. You didn't give me that. Give me that. Yeah, I gave you that. Um, so I wanted to mention too, for those of you that, you know, the stock might not be in your price range because it's a little over, you can see it's a little over uh, the, the $5 mark. But for those of you that like to trade options, I will tell you that I'm seeing some very good interest. Some and Jim could show you the open interest. I gave you a screenshot, Jim. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of open interest for the ones for the August 16 expiry you'll see the $7 strikes closed around 69 cents, which is a $69 contract. And then the 750 ones, $750 price target, those ones are going for $35 a contract at 35 cents each. And you can see there's a lot of interest in there, 3,300 contracts and over 1,400 in the $7 ones, both for August 16 expiry. So obviously the traders that are buying the contracts are anticipating that the stock will be around the $7 plus mark um, and hopefully be in the money in the next uh, two weeks. So not this week, but maybe by next week. So two good weeks of uh, potential action coming our way. So sorry, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, and I do believe it can go higher. It, it did have some very good earnings. And I think uh, oh, net income was 15.8 million and it's five cents a share compared to a loss of 5 million last time. So it did post a profit. And I do believe that this could be one of the top revenue in 2020 of 650 to 700 million. So it has a great forecast out 
forecast outlook for it. So let's pull up the stock itself. Hmm. Give me just one second here. I'll turn that into red. There we go. So this is the year, uh, 20 day chart. I'm going to pull up the year and show you that this has a lot of room to run up. It did have a year high of 1686 and it had a year low of 13 of 375. It did create a head and shoulders right here for about three months and pulled back to that low, not low support, but a little above that support area right around the 511 spot, 517. We did have a breakout on it Friday and it did run up to 733 close. So I'm going to pull up, and I think this can go up higher and reach back up to create this in, into this general area, which is right around, oh, let me look here, right around $9 to maybe a resistance high of 1056, somewhere in that channel. And I've been watching this stock for quite a bit. You can tell by the trend lines that I have on here. Let's go to the 20 day now. Look at that beautiful breakout that we had when earnings came out. It just popped up on Thursday and then continued to run up into Friday with a day high of 745. I did call pullback in the room on this trade, and we're going to show you that pullback that I could call. I said this could pull back to the 696 area, and I had a little pivot point area, that support area that I wanted it to hold, and that was at 705 to 708. After this first initial breakout, and I identified what I called, thought was a negative flag, it did pull back to that channel area of 705, 708, and bounced up to a double top and failed. Once it did that, it did pull back to that low support at 696 that I called in the room. And then from there on, it respected that 9 EMA and that 34 and ran up to a double, triple top up here at 745 and then failed that too. I look at the previous high that we did have here at 717 and 720. I called that later in the room. I said maybe it could pull back there. And now it closed after hours at 733. And after hours itself, it's at 727. I am bullish on this trade, but we're going to try to see if we can get a support out of it. And I think the strong buy on this is going to be a little under that $7 area. If that $7 hits, that'll be a strong buy. If not, you'll have your second support area at 705 to 708 with that first support right in here on the 717, 720. With a resistance to break at 745 to the next target area or 744. And you notice when I wrote that 744, I'm looking at the base of the candle wick, not the wick, but the base of the candle. That's where all the mustard is. You see, we hit that base one, almost two, three, four, five, six, seven different times. So that base right there at 744 is going to be the resistance that we have to break. And then I want to flag this up. And the next resistance is going to be right around here at 759. Yes, I do take these in small increments because I can spot these, con these patterns where they kind of consolidate. So that 759, if we pull back to that 705, 708 area, is going to be a strong buy. And that's going to be APHA. The next one we're going to talk about is what Vegas would call is an uncrowded trade, JCS. Okay. I do want to just comment before I go on to that yeah. one just to finish off on a free, uh, the APHA. Yeah. Um, you know, they did also, one of the things, I was just reading the transcripts and the comments from the CEO, um, and they did mention that, you know, part of the reason they had good results too was, that, you know, they did receive, earlier in the year 50 million dollars from an otc stock called green growth brands and you can look at the stock the ticker is ggbxf and uh apparently that was after the company's hostile takeover bid failed now this is what's interesting this company afria is apparently going to be receiving another 39 million dollars canadian in november from green growth brands inc so you should also be watching the OTC stock, GGBXF, because oh, yeah. they go together with APHA. So those of you that like OTC stocks, you should be watching this one because it's connected with APHA. 
Hey. That's a bottom play, too. You're down there at a low yeah. early support with a high of 521. You're at 161 right now. And I, I, I know. And, I, and I'm going to bring this one up, too, because we're talking. We're on the list of pot yeah. stocks. I noticed that on my pot watch list that we were probably, I'd say, 80%, 70% green. And we might be having a small little rebound here. So keep an eye on your, your favorite pot stocks and see how they're looking also. But I do notice on my pot stock watch list that they are, that we did have a green Friday on it, which is pretty bullish to me. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be uh, JCS. Okay, so JCS. Um, you know what? I've never actually traded this stock before, so very interesting company. I bring it to your attention because it had earnings and also new 52-week high. So this company is a communications company. And they provide different um, broadband network services. Um, they basically manage and optimize uh, broadband networks and architecture. And they're very into the fiber optics and application for home, voice, and data deployment. Uh, and they have also various partners and customers across 50 countries. Uh, so that's uh, interesting. But here's what I like. So they did have the uh, earnings here. Uh, recently, the sales were 15.4 million, which increased 2.4%. Uh, the reason it was up was because of the transition networks uh, offset by lower sales. Um, that consolidated gross profit increased by 43% to 5.7 million from 4.0 million last year. Um, so, you know what? The companies had some good progress in comparison to last year. Um, also, their cash equivalent and restricted cash and investments totaled $17.8 million and working capital was $35.1. So, so this company, to me, is in very good shape. Um, the CEO, uh, Roger Lacey, did say that, uh, as expected, they've had a very solid quarter for the company. And um, even though their sales increased by 2.4%, uh, despite the $1.1 million decrease uh, from the sale of the FutureLink fiber product, their margin substantially improved due to improving product offerings on uh, adding specific value services and implementing cost-saving initiatives for every single business unit. So what ended up happening is that the efforts resulted in a positive net income for the quarter, and that's fantastic. So definitely uncrowded, um, and I and don't forget, the company has working capital of $35.1 million, and shareholder equity of $44.8 million. So they have adequate cash to finance future plans and growth at the company. So this is still under $5 stock. Um, I do like the chart. I like where it's going. New 52-week highs on JCS. Um, where can this go? Well, to me, this can go probably around the fours and maybe uh, $4.35, probably more. Um, but for now, this to me would be like a swing trade opportunity uh, because the reason I say that is there's just not a lot of volume at the moment on this particular stock. That's not to say volume can't come in at any time, but earnings is gone. Earnings was good, cash on hand. So definitely watch this one for a good swing trade setup. And I mean, if you look at the weekly chart, it's on a new uptrend. It's got a pocket pivot. It's an earnings mover, new 52-week high. It's just everything's check, check, check. You know, they passed the test. So, Jim, let's hear what you have to say. We did have a three-year high at 708, and that three-year low was right at 203, and that was right before the end of the year. Or let me see here. So we're going to pull up. This is a three-year chart, and I just drew a couple extra resistance lines in there, one at 4 bucks, one at 414. That's going to be a critical pivot point area. If it wants to break that 414, it can move on up into these other channels of resistance. And I'm going to put another one right here at 428. And we'll go along with it right around 449, 450. At 449, 450. So we're going to pull up what I would call the one-year chart. And I'm going to show you what Miss Vegas was talking about here. We did hit a double top breakout resistance. And that number was right around this area right in here at 378. We did close with a high of 385 come Friday, last Friday. I also seen something else on the chart that looked to me fairly attractive. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. We have what you call this 
triangle right here is what you would call a, an ascending triangle. It needs to break that resistance at 385 to continue on up. If does not, it can pull back to the bottom of this trend line here at 373 and retrace that bounce and try to break it again. But this is a triple top. We did have it last week on Monday. We did have it pre-market and we did have it right after hours. So it, it kind of, like she said, it's a very uncrowded trade. The volume on it wasn't very high on the stock Friday. The volume was right around 22,000. So if you see these volume bars coming in here and start to spike up on the daily one minute, you might be getting into an ascending triangle breakout. Remember, we've got to break that resistance of 385. I'm going to give you the supports one more time. That low support on this trade is going to be at 360. Your second one's going to be right here at 367. The first channel of support is going to be between 373 as of now to 376. With a resistance breakout of 385 to 4 bucks. And what did I say again? Let's see if we can pull it up here. 4 bucks. I'm going to pull back that 3 year. Write this down on paper. You're willing to stop this at any time. Save these charts. Compare them to your interest. See if they match. We got a $4, 414, 428, and a 449. And we'll expand this up a little bit here so you can see that. And you can stop this at any time and write them numbers down. And that's JCS. The next one we're going to talk about is REFR. Hello, Miss Vegas. Hi. Okay. Okay. A lot of action at my house. <laughs> Um, so REFR, this is Reefer. We've talked about Reefer before. And uh, again, this is an earnings, uh, not an earnings play yet. I mean, they have earnings coming off August 13th. So not this week, but next week. So you can definitely keep us on your watch list. Definitely look to, I like this even for a swing trade, uh, even for day trade, because again, it had new 52 week closing highs. Uh, the stock is overbought. The Bollinger Bands are really wide. And so it looks to me there's going to be some range uh, action, range expansion happening here on this uh, reefer. Now, if you go and reefer uh, for one second here. Sorry, my Gucci just wants to go. So this company is into the industrial electrical equipment, and they're out in the U.S. And uh, I think, Jim, you could show them the website yep. if you want. I am. On, it's at what, smartglass.com? So you would think with a company like Research Frontiers, like why would the name, the website be called smartglass.com, right? Kind of doesn't go with the name of the company. I would think this is like a prescription glasses company. Um, so you could see that the weekly chart's super strong here. And, um, you know, they have also, you know, they obviously have, they're into smart glass dimmable window solutions. And, you know, they did have some news like last month they they do do a lot of work with the cruise ships and what the, one of the things that they did recently was they did unveil what they call the dimmable window solution and this is going to be very popular in the cruise industry so obviously instead of these cruise ships um you know obviously the, the it gets bright it gets dark automatically the windows will just dim on their own and as a matter of fact i will tell you i did see this on the aircraft that i was flying on when I went to Israel, they had, um, instead of having to close your window with the shutter, the window would automatically just dim according to the light and time of day. So I thought that was really cool. So uh, this smart glass technology is uh, pretty popular and it's electronically tintable glass. And it just date basically, like I said, changes the window tint or even you can have it for a skylight and also you can control it if you want with a touch of a button and it keeps out the harsh sunlight and the heat so this way you always stay you know your place is kept uh you know under proper um temperature controlled in so many different ways so you know what very interesting uh good interesting technology they're even using it on sunroof of cars as well uh so it's quite um you know quite an interesting technology so Jim, let's hear about the chart. Yeah, they're in all kinds of different industries. And I remember back in the 70s, I thought I was real rad because I wore bifocals. And I used to have these lenses that would tint in the day. And then when I got inside, they would lighten up. 
so it's not this this company to me was is is just a very good company and we've been watching it for a while and we've been calling it out for a little while here as you can tell it did have a bottom here and i'm going to pull this up on a uh, three-year chart so we did break that resistance and we've created kind of like a new channel up here but it did have a low of 60 cents and then last friday we pulled up to a resistance high of 409 which my resistance is going to be right here right around the 404 area 405 and that's right where it kind of pulled back to after hours or closed. So we're going to pull up the yearly now. And you can have a look at the yearly real fast like. You can see it's been a totally great run all year long. It does pull back. Pulled back twice to that 200 EMA. Rode that 9 up. And then kind of fumbled around into 34 and, and went below it. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. Look at the 20 day. We did have a year, of, a year high at 409 with a year low of 85 cents. So let's pull up the 20 day right now. One hour. Like I said, this is my TTM squeeze chart. We did have a squeeze on it last week for three days. And she did have that breakout. And we still have some more resistance that we can go up on it. I like to see that 39 double top on that TTM squeeze. And then I'd consider maybe an exit if I was scalping the trade. Support level 388. We're going to pull up to daily now and see if I can find a couple more supports on the daily one minute looking pretty good looking pretty good we got a support level right in here kind of stair stepping at 395 and then right down here I'm going to call this 378 right where that 200 EMA is I use these three moving averages on a day trade or to find supports and resistances you always want to look it back at there's People trade different ways. People don't trade at all with any kind of tools. They just trade on the history of a stock and they kind of take guessing game or you, you can be more precise like I am and other traders and use these other tools for supports and resistances. So we have a low support down here at 370. We have your second support right here off that 200 EMA at 378 to 370 to 380. Your second support is going to be right here at 388. You got the trip, the double top breakout at 409. Your first support's going to be right here at 395. So let me, I got a little out of link there. It's 370 low support. Second, 378. First one's going to be right here at 388. And it could pull back to the 395 and retrace back up to a triple top breakout at 409. And the resistances that we want to go to this, as you see, when I pulled up that three year, that was a three year high. So you want to take this in 25 cent increments if it does break that 409 area. Take it to like, uh, you know, 425, 450, 475, four, five dollars, and that's how I would kind of play that trade. And that's R E F R. The next one we're going to talk about was brought to a guy in our room named Stock Authority. It's A N C N, Miss Vegas. And you know what? I'm glad he brought this to my attention because you know what? This ANCN had a beautiful volume surge, pocket pivot, and it looks like a trend reversal is happening here. And you know what? Thank you, Stock Authority, on this one, just for the alert on to keep this on a watch and maybe looking at this for a potential uh, reversal here. But, you know, this company is they're into gene therapy for early stage bladder cancer. So many people affected with this. Um, and, um, you know, this actual company is trading under cash value. I mean, they have a market cap of $50.5 million. Um, the shares outstanding, um, very low float. Um, they have, they do have cash, by the way. And this is what I want to point out. And you know what, Jim, you can show this too. This is really important yes. with a biotech company because when a stock is this price, under five bucks, and you know, these biotechs, they have a tendency, we've talked about this so many times, that they do these offerings. And a lot of times these biotechs, they do the offerings for a few reasons, because they got to stay above the dollar. They got to do reverse splits. They need the cash to continue going to different phases of clinical trials. Well, look at this right here. Jim, I'll show you that clip art right there. Yep. On the financials of the company, they got $32 million cash. They got no debt. This information is directly from the company's website. So you know what? I like to trade this actual stock because I'm looking at that huge volume spike that took place on Friday. Um, this has potential 
for some uh, additional movement and some additional target. I mean, the thing is, this is also a low float and um, there is uh, definitely good opportunity here for a uh, reversal to get in to take place here. So, you know what, Jim, give me your thoughts on the chart because um, the thing is the company, in my opinion, is trading below cash. Uh, this should probably be, I would say, $6 a share. Um, they did have, they did raise funds, but uh, they have money until like 2020. And they also have key data that's coming in the third or fourth quarter of this year. So um, eventually this could get FDA fast tracking uh, based for that bladder cancer treatment. And so, you know, who knows at any time there could be future news, but definitely keep this on watch. I'm very interested. Whenever I see a volume spiking like that out of nowhere, that's like telling me something. So definitely keep a watch. And the thing is what I love the most, not just aside from the float, um, I love the fact this company has cash and this is very good for a company at this price. So Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on this chart. Yeah. Was a bottom play last week. It had a low of two. Oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention. Also, they have a location in Israel too. Um, they're in Cambridge and also in Jerusalem. So it's also Israeli technology too, which you guys know. I love Israeli biotechs. All right, as Miss Vegas said, the financials are stable. That's a positive thing on this. And when he brought this up in the room, I said I liked it. And when I like something that he pulls up, it's usually a good one to keep on your watch list. He, is, he likes to play the bottoms, and he's very good at that, and that's why we follow him, and that's why he's in our room. So we have a 284 low right here as a support level. We did have a 273 low. Uh, what I noticed on this chart, and I'm going to pull it up on 20-day, we did have a high up here at 1150, and it sewed off down to 273. So this is a definitely a bottom play. As you see right here, we got a pennant flag. It did pull back to the pivot point of that pennant flag, which is right in the middle, more or less, at right around close at 318, with a high up here right around the 349 area, with a low down at, on the pre on that day here at 275. So at the last, let me see, the last hour, the last three hours of the day, the last five hours, it did produce a pennant flag, and it, it you could tell, and it's just an attractive little pattern that I like to see. Now the resistance that we're going to break are going to be a bunch of them. The pullback support is going to be right here right around the three dollar area is going to be your first one with a low 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 strong buy at 284. If we can break resistance up here and I'm going to call it right on the base of that candle there at 334. So you got a little 329 to 334 resistance that we got to get to. I think it can break that resistance of 334 and bring it on up. And I'm going to pull this yearly up so I can get a better perspective on what I call a strong resistance. And that's and what was that 384 right here is going to be your strong resistance to get to 384. If we can break that double bottom on that 384, we've got two other resistances to get to, and that's at 423 and 472. I'm going to magnify this up a little bit. You can stop these video at any time and write these numbers down. We got a low support here at 284, low strong buy. We got a, a, a first, second support at 3. Your first one's at 313. The resistance that we got to break is going to be on that 20 day. I'm going to pull that up right now. That resistance is going to be right here at 320, 334. If we can break that 334, we'll go up to the higher areas on this chart. You're able to stop this chart at any time and write these numbers down. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be my favorite place, and that's McDonald's. I eat there once a year. Miss Vegas? Miss Vegas? McDonald's. Okay, well, you know what? This is one of my favorite stocks. I love this stock. And um, you know what? What a beautiful play this was on Friday. Um, traded this again from the options angle. We called the 212.50. You know, I should have paid attention to Jim's chart he showed earlier in the week on Wednesday. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, we took the 212.50 calls. They were 56 cents. And this rent over $2.00. 
per contract. I mean, almost uh, 400% gains in one day. Um, again, you know, I don't really care if it goes to 400%. I really like to go for base by base. So you know what, if it went from $56, there's a contract, and it goes to a $1.30 um, or one ten. you know what, I'm happy with 100%. So, uh, and you should be too. So if you have McDonald's, keep it on your watch. I still like it. It's back on my watch because it did pull back. I had some weakness in the stock, but you know what, because the earnings are done. Um, but you know what, the um, Bollinger Bands are squeezing above the 20-day moving average, and I think we should still keep this on your watch for a potential move in the next coming sessions. So, Jim, I want to hear what your thoughts are on McDonald's because I'm going to set up a new alert. Oh, yeah. Well, out Wednesday, you can see this alert I did call out. This was, pre this was right around 10 o'clock, and I said if this thing got down to support level of 209.96 to 210 support, that I'd be holding, you know, this is the bottom of a trend line. So I'm going to pull up the chart and show you exactly what I mean by bottom of the trend line. I'm going to pull up the yearly, daily, and it had a trend that it's been running up and down. It's been hitting that resistance level, and then it pulled back and hit that support, run up and hit that resistance level, and then it followed that resistance all the way up here. And then last week, after earnings, it started to pull back. And I was talking even back then, I said, this could pull back to the bottom of this trend line. That's going to be right around the 210 area. Well, I got come Wednesday, I really got to looking at it. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day now. And that last one, pull up the 5-day, five 5-day, five 5 minute. And we did have a high when the earnings came out to around 220, and then it started pulling back, and it had a pretty hard sell-off for three days. And it did. So right about when it pulled back to this first time, right around 10 o'clock, I mentioned to the room, I said, this could pull back another stage and maybe hit the bottom of that trend line, which is down here right around the 209 area, 209 something, or it could stop right here at the 209.96. And that's what I said in, in that alert. And bam, man, right it, almost before close, it pulled back and it hit that 290. 209.96, which I, can, I don't go off the wicks. I go again off the base of the candles. And bam, man, she was right on it, right to the penny. And then the next Thursday and Friday, Thursday morning, it bounced up and pulled back to support, which was that bottom that we had previous on Wednesday, and bounced off that, kind of retraced and pulled back again. And then Friday, we had the big breakout. And so I'm going to pull this up to a daily one minute right now. McDonald's, we've been bullish on it for a whole year and we're still bullish on this trade and I do believe it can get back up to that 220 level long if you want to call it out for a couple of months fine but we're gonna pull up the daily one minute right now I've got a support level right down here at a low of right around 213.50 to 213.67 that's where I want it to hold your low low support is going to be right here at 213 even and if you can get to that area, that's going to be a strong buy. Now, as you see, it did touch down to that 200 on a daily one minute. And you can also call that a support level if it comes to that Friday, uh, Monday morning. And I love stocks, loves Mondays. Mondays are always different than Fridays. You know, you could have a great run on Friday or last week. And then when Monday comes, things could start to pull back, vice versa. Things could be pulling back to previous week and then come out Monday. It's like the critical day of finding out if it's going to be a good week for the stock or if it's going to be a bad week for the stock. So Monday is going to be the test pretty much at the bell. If it pulls back to this 213.67 area, I'm going to call that a strong buy. The resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be that resistance line at 214.94. I'm going to pull up the 20-day one more time. See if we can find a couple more resistances that we got to get to. Let's say, let's see if this stock doesn't get up here to two seventeen, two hundred and seventeen dollars next week. And if it pulls back, it could pull back to this bottom trend line. But I think we're two days out of a breakout, and I do believe that we can run up again long and hit the top of this trend line, or we can hit that resistance breakout of two seventeen, going long two twenty is going to be your long double top breakout of the year. And this thing is at an all-time high. 
it's just something that I really like. It's under great management. Their 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 menus changed a bit. It's got they've needed to do that a long time ago, but they finally caught on last year with the new management. You got that great coffee in, and I like I said, I only eat there once a year, and usually the people that are behind me in the drive-through get a free meal. So let's go. And the last one we're going to talk about is a car that Vegas is going to buy me next year if she gets to a million dollars, and that's going to be Tesla. That's right. So, you know what? Tesla, you know, they did bring back, I gave you an article there to show, they did bring back the unlimited supercharging for Model S and Model X cars. So, you can supercharge your car and uh, no cost. You can juice up your vehicle. It's a perk that he's uh, described as unsustainable. And it's, it's, you know, his latest decision suggests that it makes business sense for more expensive models in the company's range. Um, you know, the sales for both the X and S models have slowed down. So maybe he's thinking, you know, having unlimited charging deal as a way to get new customers to go for the premium model rather than buying the Model 3. Um, and don't forget, YouTube and Netflix are coming to the Tesla cars. And, um, you know, there's going to be some new perks coming in. So... Hey, listen, uh, nothing wrong with that. But, you know, be careful. Obviously, don't you can watch a maybe you can listen to a podcast on uh, YouTube, um, but you wouldn't want to be watching YouTube and driving. <laughs> I mean, that would be dangerous. Uh, but going to Tesla's weekly chart, I am liking the fact that uh, it's had, uh, you know, the last trading sessions, the last seven days, um, it has showed some range contraction. So I won't be surprised to see this stock come back. I won't even be surprised to see this go back to actually 250. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim and talk about Tesla's chart because he's the chartist. Let's hear about Tesla. Yeah, I've been calling Tesla out for almost every day for ever since the IPO came out. And the benefits of Musk not tweeting anymore is, should be the benefit of Trump not tweeting anymore. Trump brought the ter market in turmoil last year with the trade year trade war tweets with China and the same thing with Musk. He didn't help the company much at all with his tweets because they were pretty much premature and immature on my behalf. So we did have a pullback here to support level at 296. It did pull back off earnings. We're going to pull up the yearly, take a look at the yearly. We did have a low down here that we called out in the room right around 180. It did bounce up found some resistance up around the 210 area. Once it consolidated off that 210, it started bouncing up into the 226 area and kind of pulled back right into around the 215, 216 area and, and found another bottom. And then we had the resistance that we broke out all the way to the 200 EMA on a yearly daily chart. So earnings came out, it did gap down and it was shorted to the 226 227 area we called it out in the room and we're gonna might, we might pull back to that area again at the 227 that's going to be a solid support anything below that's going to be a strong buy and that's going to be tesla so we're going to pull up to 20 day one hour chart you see what happened after earnings came out i was per, more or less not that bullish on it and it did pull back and then pulled back to a low support right here right around the 220 let me see, let me draw this trend line here where I would call a support level at 223.49. It did have a 222.25 low and it did bounce up last Wednesday all the way up to this 246.49 and then had another two day sell off back to support level. And we're going to call that right in here right around the 228.84. So it's, Tesla's a hard thing to judge. You have to kind of just watch it when it breaks out in the morning and see which way it's going and follow the trend. It's not one that you can say, okay, next day I think it's going to go ahead and bounce on up and, and run. But the resistance we do need to break is going to be that 246.49 area. And the solid support, strong buy is at the 223.49. And right now we're in the pivot point of that channel. We did try to break that high up here back on... Uh, was that Monday it did bounce have a good Monday and then it pulled back Tuesday so that resistance that we got a break is going to be the pivot point in this channel and I'm going to draw this in a red line and that's going to be let me take another look at it 
Right at 235.84, we are setting up in an ascending triangle here Friday for that breakout of 235.84. If we do, we will get back up to the resistance level that will possible breakout, which I'm going to start calling a strong, a strong resistance at 246.49. Support level is going to be right around the 228.65. Anything below that is a strong buy. The pivot point is going to be here at 235.84. And that finishes our watch list with the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. And I think Miss Vegas will have a few more things to say. But I also want to point out on our website, we do have a place right here. It's got that little bird. You all know what that is. That's called Twitter. Hit that follow button. Miss Vegas posts alerts in here. On a daily basis, stocks we're watching, if you're not wanting to get into the room, we also do have a week trial in the room, and you can sign up here under the chat service, see the setup instructions, and follow them instructions. Also, another thing I wanted to point out here, I did point out a little bit earlier, is our Pintergeist. We do have a, a link there. Follow us there. And we also have our our stock twit pages mine and vegas's we have a facebook page and we also hit that youtube channel and please subscribe to that youtube and ring that bell for future updates miss vegas okay well you know what i just i didn't really want to say much today actually just uh want to say thank you for listening thank you for following we appreciate all the fans and the loyalty and for the subscribers that don't have a chance to come to the room uh, certainly follow us on social media because we do do post a lot of information on there. And uh, if you ever have any questions on a stock, you're welcome to message us here and we'll be happy to look at it. And we might be doing a live YouTube broadcast in the, in the coming week or so. So stay tuned for that. We'd love to see you there. So have a great weekend, everyone, and see you tomorrow on the trade floor. And if you're not, this is just something I want to bring up on the website. We do have a trader tools right here. You can go through that and see what we got to offer if you're not joining the room. But we do have stock scans, we have stock portal, and we have stock traders. So, yeah, that's the ending, the conclusion of the report for Sunday's edition, which is usually longer than the weekday editions. Today's date is August 4th, 2019. Have a great coming week, and we love stocks.